G'day, my name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show they tried to send to rehab but said no, no, no. <laughs> Our two team captains each and every week are the sizzling Alan Bro and the sparkling Miff Warhurst. Oh. <laughs> Alan's first guest tonight is an American instrumentalist and singer who in 2006 was named by Rolling Stone magazine as a guitar god. She can't turn water into wine, but she can make her backstage rider disappear. Welcome back, Khaki King. <laughs> And I've seen it happen. <laughs> Alan's second team member tonight was known for years as one half of one of Australia's most loved comedy duos. No, he's not the ostrich, he's Frank Woodley. <laughs> Miss first guest tonight is an internationally renowned opera singer who has performed for Jack Palance, Jerry Halliwell, Martina Navratilova and Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> oh yes, the show itself was great, but the key party afterwards went horribly wrong. Please welcome Michael Smallwood. <laughs> Miss Final Guest is a comedian and broadcaster who can still be seen on TV repeats telling us how we'll all be living in the year 2000. <laughs> Strap on your jetpacks and welcome back Amanda Keller. <laughs> now, before we do anything with the show, I want to point something out. The last time Kaki was on, you mentioned something called a turducken. Yeah. Would you like to explain? I'd like to explain. It is a uh, chicken inside a duck inside a turkey that is uh, then cooked. And mm. then supposedly eaten, but I don't think that really, the last step doesn't really happen. But I was coming back on the show and I was so excited and someone had sent to me, because I, because the turducken has become a theme of my life now. They right. said, well, you know, here is the turbacon ducken, which is a turducken, which is already just the most disgusting, obscene thing wrapped in bacon. Oh. Oh. Wow. And we have a picture of it. This is a turbacon ducken. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they just garnish it with the tears of a dolphin? <laughs> <laughs> There's also a new thing with deep fried chocolate dipped bacon in batter and salt. Oh, hey. I think Elvis has just woken up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, our I first feel, game tonight. I feel like a Dagwood dog right now. Oh, we're going to have to explain a Dagwood dog. Yeah, what's a Dagwood dog? They take a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick and Alan will pick a topic. Everybody will be quizzed on it. Your choices tonight are instrumentals, world music, pop opera, and techno. Alan can pick the first topic tonight. We'll have instrumentals, please. Oh, certainly, Miff. We'll take pop op. <laughs> <laughs> opera. Pop opera. Pop opera. <laughs> pop opera. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I'm um, just pop opera. It's like it's like opera, but popular opera, whereas most opera is, is unpopular. Pretty what unpopular. Is it? <laughs> and some opera is openly hated. <laughs> Or is it when opera singers do like popular tunes? Because I remember I went and saw Dame Joan Sutherland in the late eighties, mm. and I remember she sang, um, "Am I ever gonna see your <laughs> face again?" And the whole crowd went, "No way, get lost." Get away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll start with instrumentals. Everyone on your buzzers. Let's play Speaks and Specs. Uh, your first question for one point: What was the name of the nineteen seventy-two instrumental hit by Hot Butter? <laughs> yes. Yes, it was oh, popcorn. Yes. Well done. Yes, well done, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, although it has a few words at the end, this clip is for the most part an instrumental. Your question is: It's Elton John from the album A Single Man. For two points, who is the song for? Yes. Oh damn! Went too early. <laughs> <laughs> song for Guy. It is song for Guy. And oh. what was the rest of the question? <laughs> Guy's his brother. No. Oh, well, there but you go. The rest of the question was, what profession did he have? Rody? Not Oh, a lighting technician. Right. Anyone? Anyone? Rigger? Runner? Stage manager? Uh, tennis yeah, gonna, he tennis was actually coach? Tennis coach. <laughs> <laughs> he was a messenger for Elton's record label, which is close to a runner, so I'm going to give go. you the point oh, for that. well done. <laughs> And according to a reviewer, Elton John wrote and recorded that piece on the afternoon of Sunday, August 18, 1978. Basically, kind of got the, the, the music came into his head. He said he felt it was a song about death, didn't have a title for it. And then the next day, found out that his messenger had died that afternoon. And then decided to call it a song for Guy. Oh, and that's how it came about. Wow, and then, what's weird, is two weeks later, Elton found a tiny dancer dead in his garden. <laughs> And on the same day, Tony Danza was born. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, listen to the following grabs of notable <laughs> instrumentals. For three points, name all three artists responsible. Uh, 
Yeah. The first one's Herbie Hancock. Yes, it was. Yeah. The third one's Dick Dale. Dale. Yes. And the middle one, it sounds like Money Mark, it's but it's not Money Mark. Yeah. Come on, Kaki, you're the instrumentalist. We're depending on you. Or the Beastie Boys. It was actually the Flaming Lips with the song Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots Part 2. Oh! I read somewhere that you, you say your, your task in life now is to bring instrumental music back to Obviously the Obviously I'm failing. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I think I remember what you were talking about and I think I said that I was on a romantic and idealistic quest to bring instrumental music back to the masses. That's exactly what I read, yes. So I was being facetious and sardonic <laughs> and, and rather sarcastic towards the interviewer. Oh, okay. Didn't come yeah. across in the interview. Oh, darn. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to be an arsehole. <laughs> oh, I love the fact you said asshole. I was trying to fit in. Our cultures are not that different. <laughs> I can be one of you. Just to speak really funny. Well, here's what I also read. <laughs> oh, we speak funny? Oh, Miss Aluminum. Um, Let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> I also read that your basic reason for touring Australia this year is to just see as many tourist spots as possible. That's my reason for touring Australia always. <laughs> are you touring the big stuff? Like, are you touring the big banana and the big clam and the big... Merino. <laughs> the big merino and the I'm big lawnmower? I'm touring the great stuff. Mm. The great ocean road, the great sandy oh, yeah. desert, the great western mm. mountain, the great... Yeah, definitely avoid the average ocean road. Yeah. <laughs> In New Zealand, they have a mountain range called the Remarkables. You should probably do that, too. In America, we have the Grand Tetons, which is the large breasts. No. Oh. And I saw those, and those were remarkable. <laughs> well, I reckon the Remarkables would be remarkable, because New Zealand never talks itself up. Mm. Like, they, this is true. They used to have a show similar to That's Incredible, and it was called That's Fairly Interesting. <laughs> and that's and the true. Thing is, and I can vouch for that, and often it didn't even live up to its time. <laughs> All right, let's move on to pop opera. Your first question yeah. for one point. World-renowned thanks to their album Here's to the Heroes, which group could be considered Queensland's equivalent to the three tenors? <laughs> yes. The ten tenors. Yes. Oh. Yes! Oh. <laughs> I knew that one. My friend was their tour manager. Your friend was their tour yes. manager. <laughs> you know, they're they're, the they're huge in Germany. They're the yeah. biggest act. There's two really big acts in Germany. One was the Ten Tenors and the other was the Puppetry of the Penis. Ah. They were huge. And if they ever do a show together, <laughs> what? <laughs> For two points. Selling more than 22 million albums, name this four-man pop opera group and... Yes. Oh. El, El Devo. It is El Devo. You are all over this sort of stuff. Yeah. And, they say, and they sing, When a problem comes along, you must whip it. <laughs> Devo, El Devo, right. No, that's La Devo, yeah, right. the Italian Il Devo Virginia. cover band. Yeah. Right. You look like this, by the way. <laughs> There's another part of that question, isn't there? Yes, there is. So the first part was, what are they called? Yes. And the second part Who was... Who started them? Simon Cowell. Yes! Oh! Thank you. <laughs> Three points on the line for your final question. Watch this version of the song Barcelona. I need, I need three things. I need the name of the two singers and which 70s glam rocker performed the original. Yes. Um, that's your man, um, Sean Ryder from The Happy Mondays. Yes. Russell Watson yes. is the singer and uh, your man Freddie Mercury wrote the original. Three points For out of three, Alan <laughs> He wrote it for the Barcelona Olympics and a, a, the Spanish singer sung it with him. Oh. It was and do you, know, do you know her name? No, I don't. OK, now it was Montserrat Caballé, also known as Monster Fat Cowbelly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I and love some... nicknames. She's huge. <laughs> All right, we should do a score check. Oh, uh, no, 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 Each team will have to correctly identify the common link between three separate artists. Myth, Michael and Amanda can go first. Your artists are lead singer of The Doors, Mr Mojo Ryzen, Jim Morrison, Australia's favourite pop princess, Kylie Minogue, and bassist for LA band Red Hot Chili Peppers, Flea. What do those three artists have in common? They've all recorded a song with Jason Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Morrison died in a bar. Kylie did a film clip. Was it I should be so lucky in the bubbles in the bar? Yeah. Flea's never had a bar. <laughs> <laughs> he died in the bar. That's right. In France. Mm. Kylie Minogue's got a boyfriend in France. 
she would have had a bath in France. And, a <laughs> and if Lee maybe had a spa or something in France. Knows where France is. Yeah. <laughs> so your common link between Jim Morrison, Kylie Minogue still and still work Flea in progress. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Is that is they've this... all had a bath in France. <laughs> and they have. So I can get about <laughs> famous <laughs> siblings. Obviously Kylie you know, is Danny. Yeah. Uh, maybe is Jim James Morrison, the trumpeter, maybe Flea, <laughs> maybe Adam Ant. <laughs> Can we get with there anything? No, else? I've got nothing. Birthdays else. or anything? Like that? Um, they're all Aquarians. Kylie's Kylie's around my time. <laughs> When's that? 29th of May. What's that? Jim and I. Jim and I. I have come absolutely on. no idea. I'm an opera singer. We don't do pop but culture. But has oh, come Flea on. got something in Melbourne? Oh, we well, Flea was yeah. born in Melbourne as, well, Kylie, obviously, Melbourne. Yeah. Jim Morrison born in Victoria Falls. <laughs> <laughs> We've got no idea. No. Is, is it possible oh. that it's because fleas, when you get fleas, they often come back? And Kylie is the <gasps> Aboriginal word for a boomerang, which always comes back. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Mr Jim Morrison! <laughs> Out in Maybe. naked with, with a sock a on sock. it, just with a sock. He got his thing out at a concert and um, got arrested. And yeah. got arrested. And then there's Kylie. And though. then Kylie. <laughs> and <she's> like, <laughs> I knew it. Kylie has a penis. <laughs> That's Danny. That's, That's not me. <laughs> Uh, look, you, so far you've come up with, way? you've come up with, they've all had a bath in France. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, some of them were born two. in Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. And, and some of them they have, have a sibling. And two of them have got things. Uh, so your answer is? Well, you figure it out. <laughs> 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 we well, can't. Do you know what? I'm going to give you a hint. One of those that you tried to offer up was the correct answer. Oh! The sock on the penis bit? <laughs> I need an answer. Okay, we've got the uh, birthday. That's the only logical okay, way. None of the others make sense. They're all Geminis. The correct answer is they were all born in the city of Melbourne. Oh. Jim Morrison? Uh, Melbourne, uh, Flo yes, Melbourne, Melbourne, Florida. Florida. Jim oh. Morrison and the other two in Melbourne, Victoria. Uh, there is also another link. They all have their own uh, line of products. Uh, Kylie has lingerie and perfume. Flea has his own line of bass guitars. And Jim has his highly profitable lawn mowing business. <laughs> <laughs> Lawn-mowing business that delivers grass. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Kaki, Frank, here are your artists. Uh, lead singer of The Pretenders, Chrissy Hine. Yep. Die Straits frontman and poster boy for Terry Towling headbands, Mark Lockler. <laughs> <Lopper. laughs> <laughs> and radio announcer and Spicks and Specs team captain, the lady to my left, Miff Warhurst. Oh! Oh! What did those three artists have in common? They've all appeared naked with a sock on their penis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, okay. see, I uh, reckon this is this is easier than some of the others because we have one of the participants here that mm. we can <laughs> question. Question. I don't yeah. feel safe right now. Don't give them anything. Do you know what, Miff? If you look to your left and then back to your right, it's like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mark. You might patch Mark Knopfler at that. Right? Uh, uh, Chrissy Hine, hey, really. Is it possible for you to pass a sandwich over to Chrissy Hine? Because she looks like she really needs a meal. She's starting to eat herself. <laughs> oh, though Mark Knopfler's looking happier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's creepy. Any ideas? Well, the only, um... thing, I've, well, the only thing I've got is that um, both Chrissy Hine and Mark Knopfler were shocked on national television to be introduced to an identical twin they'd never seen. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> bring out... No, nothing. OK, um, Miff, are you a vegetarian? Oh, are you you like animals? Love animals. I are should you be a vegetarian. a member of any animal protection society? Because Chrissy Hine is right into Chrissy that. Chrissy Hine is well into that. Yeah. I got my dog from the RSPCA. That's very <laughs> applaudable for the And that's where Mark Knopfler got his head back. <laughs> <laughs> What, were you, what year were you born in? 73. Mm -mm. Uh, Mike Court. Oh. Permission to treat the witnesses hostile. <laughs> <laughs> Permission granted. OK. Hey, have you ever, have you ever at any point, English. ever been assaulted yeah. and do you enjoy swing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the only, look, the only thing I can think of is Miff trained in the piano at the Melbourne Conservatorium. 
No, and not at the you didn't? No, not Melbourne the Uni. Melbourne Uni. Melbourne oh, Uni. Okay. Oh, okay. But trained. He's, he's, he's like a classically no. Whoa, trained wait, musician. Hang on. Wait, you're a journalist. Mm. Christy Hyde was a journalist. I don't know anything about Mark Knopfler. Well, let's, oh, let's go with that. I'm feeling good about that. I've got the vibes. Oh, we can, yeah. we can definitely see Mark Knopfler covering the tennis. <laughs> Journalists. They're, they're all the journalists. The quick answer is they were all music journalists. Oh! I thought that was going to get really personal. <laughs> At the end of that round, uh, the scores are Miff Michael Amanda, two points, Alan Kaki Frank, ten points. We have translated a set of song lyrics into Japanese and then back again into English with the use of an online internet translator. <laughs> Nothing could go wrong. <laughs> you have to guess the song from the translated lyrics. Uh, for example, the phrase, the music quiz show they tried to send to rehab but said no, 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 which we used at the beginning of the show, uh, translated into Japanese and back into English as us whom those make the rehabilitation bit go the music quiz show which was tried was no, no, no. <laughs> this should be the easiest round ever. <laughs> Myth, Michael and Amanda, oh. here are your translated lyrics. Me circle the right, circle on the right of the baby. As in record and circular, circular, circle on the right of the baby, it turns. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. Dead or alive. Well done. <laughs> Alan, thank you, Frank. When being strange, something at your neighbourhood, it should call it is who has been done destructive person of illusion. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, um, um. It's not Guns N' Roses, is it? No, it's not Guns N' Roses. I might have to throw it to the other team, what yes. Ghostbusters! Yeah. 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 Of course it is. Michael Amanda. <laughs> yeah. I said, of course it is. I've still got no idea. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Destructive person of illusion. <laughs> Myth Michael Amanda. Refreshing eye. Me, I had now known thing. Refreshing eye. Me, I now had known thing. It is good so. It is good so. I obtained. Refreshing eye. Anyone? Any idea? I'm going to throw it over this side. It's not James Brown, is it? Yes. I feel good. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, finally, Alan Kaki Frank, your last song. Duck Architect. We may lock that. <laughs> Duck Architect. It is, and we is possible. <laughs> oh! We is lock that. We can, we can work it out. Uh, no, we yeah. don't. Like, get, get down. down. I've um, got a feeling these guys know I'm going to throw it over if you don't. Architect, oh. designer, builder. What is it? Like, get down. No one. I've got to go over. Bob the, the Builder. Can we fix it? <laughs> Bob the Builder. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God. well played. Duck is Bob. Nice work. Uh, at the end of that round, the scores are Miff, Michael, and Amanda are catching up. They're on six points. They're still behind Alan Kaki and Frank, who are on 12 points. Okay. <laughs> One member of each team will be singing well known songs using the words of an unrelated piece of text. Your teammates have to identify those songs. Uh, Kaki will be singing first for Alan and Frank, and you'll be taking your lyrics from Unicorn Mountain. <laughs> The story of four people whose lives are transformed by a herd of unicorns. <laughs> it's a real uh, That's your book, those are your songs, don't show your teammates, ladies and gentlemen, Kaki King! <laughs> and song one, please, Kaki. But maybe Gary really had been looking out in his roundabout. Assume no true responsibility, way for Bo. And he had to come to her. A. Bitter winter's day, problems astounding, even a fleeting memory of the pale unicorns in the upland vale above her ranch house. Beast that had reappeared shortly before. Are you okay? You look honest. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. We were loving we it. We are such we a jerk. We wanted jerks. to know what was going to happen. <laughs> Don't you want me, baby? Yes, don't, don't you want me, me Human League? Yeah. Uh, next one, please. The beast was eyeing him, 
<laughs> its eye had a crimson tint. The creature was a small horse. <laughs> the new frogs were there behind the cajar tent. Shut up like it is by the forest trees. Stood for five more of the creatures in a compact group. <laughs> Since you've been gone. It's since you've been gone, been Kelly Clarkson. Oh. This one went down. Final song, please. Even though he had left its operation to live during the last few years together. <laughs> I can't help falling in love with you by Elvis. Yes, can't yeah. help falling in love with Elvis Presley. Well done. Happy birthday. Uh, Michael, you'll be singing for Miff and Amanda, and you'll be taking your lyrics from the program, How to Find a Husband After 30. <laughs> uh, that's your book, there are your songs. Don't show your teammates, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Smallwood. <laughs> uh, song one for you. Graying hair and cellulite. Are the enemies your friends are talking about? <laughs> Botox and plastic surgery, there will always be some perfect older woman. Yes. Woman in love. It's a woman hey. in love, Barbara Streisand. Well spotted me. And some place. Think hard about your hair colour. You might be so used to the colour of your hair, whether it's natural or dye that you don't realize it really needs to change does it complement your skin tone skin tone changes over time so make sure your hair complements your current skin shade <laughs> is your hair yes. color too harsh You're good at this, right? yes we are the champions yes we are the champions queen <laughs> is your hair color too harsh uh, final song please <clears throat> I've seen so many relationships okay. right. that started this way and ended up failing. What I'm advocating yeah, is yeah, I'm a one-time only gesture. Yes, it's a time again. Yes. Oh, right. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Smallwood. <laughs> At the end of that round, the scores are Miff, Michael, Amanda, 10 points. Alan, Kaki, Frank, just in front, 14 points. No. <laughs> Hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. Which star of stage and screen was born Francis Ethel Gunn? Judy Garland. Yes. Frontier Touring, Paul Kelly, and which Canadian songman donated $200,000? Yes. I would say, is it Leonard Cohen? To the 09 Victorian bushfire appeal. It was Leonard Cohen. Wings is to the Beatles as the Foo Fighters. Yep. Uh, to Nirvana. Yes, Nirvana. Nirvana. Correct. Name the boy band that featured Shane, Keith, Mikey, Stephen and Ronan. Yes. Take that. Westline. No. A Westline. Um, no, Boyzone. Boyzone. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that one. I don't know the boy band questions. <laughs> Complete this song lyric. Sunday we'll find it. The Rainbow Connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and your final question. Name the person who originally sang it. Yes. Kermit the Frog. No, Jim Henson. <laughs> the person. At the end of the show, the final scores are Miff, Michael, Amanda ended up with 10 points. Alan, Kaki, Frank won the day, though, 16 points. Well done. <laughs> Would you please thank all our guests for tonight? Kaki King, Frank Woodley, Michael Smallwood and Amanda Keller. <laughs> and, of course, our two team captains, Alan Bro and Miff Warhurst. We leave you tonight with a performance by Michael Smallwood, accompanied by Claire Cooper, singing Barbara Streisand's The Way We Were, oh, using nice. lyrics translated into Japanese and then back <laughs> into English. Thanks for watching Speaks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. Deep swimming where colour the memory which is done. There were we of method. <laughs> As
as for that, is it possible to mean that then everything is very simple? <laughs> or all lines the book, you correct a time. When we that entirely and possess the chance which is done. Don't you think, call to me so is? <laughs> Was we possible? <laughs> Perhaps memory. At the present place it is beautiful To remember something which even excessively is pain As for us Chooses the fact that you forget simply Therefore that is laughter There were methodological we. There were methodological 